everyone. I am really excited today because I've just received these two absolutely gorgeous books um, through the post um, as a gift, um, which was very kind. So to start with, I just want to say thank you so much to the lovely person that sent it to me. There was a name on the gift um, receipt. I won't say it. Um, I never know whether people want to shout out or not, to be honest. I wouldn't, so I don't. But um, I haven't, I'm not sure of your contact details. So if you do want to um, get in touch with me so I can send you a, a proper personal thank you, I would love that. But otherwise, um, thank you so much. I was so happy and excited. Now, these are both books by Hannah Carlson. And the other books of hers that I've got are bigger than these. These are slightly smaller. Um, and they, I think they're part of a different series. Um, so that's quite interesting, but obviously um, they're still her sort of unique style, which I really love. Now, I'm not going to flip through both in this video. I thought I would flip through one and do a little bit of colouring and then I'll do the other one in another video. But I just wanted to show them both so that I could thank the lovely person that sent them and say, you know, I really appreciate both. And I will do a flip through and colouring in this one um, um, soon. So I'm just going to pop that one aside and have a look at this one. I'll just talk you through it a little bit. So as I say, they're a little bit smaller than her regular books. I don't have one in here. I can't go and get one because my son's recording. But this is the Johanna Bassford Planner. So you can see the size of it. It's a, only a little bit bigger than that and about the same width. So it's a smaller size book. And the cover is sort of plainer. We've got a plain, a plain colour and we've got this lovely foiling on the design and then on the back we have um, a little bit of info um, about Hannah Carlson and also a little bit about um, the book which says welcome to a magical forest kingdom spend a whole day from misty sunrise to starry night lost among the lush trees mystical plants and forest lakes while you're there meet the imaginative inhabitants living in this enchanted wood and it's a hardback book as you can see we have the foiling again along the cover there and this is sort of um, bound with a, a sort of almost fabric-y um, thing so let's have a look through I haven't even well I opened it briefly to look at the date because I thought we would look through the I know those sort of series I thought we'd look through this one first because it's the um, it's the oldest and then it would I don't know if the if it's a story that goes through, I'm not really um, that familiar. I just love the pictures. So let's go. So we have these very plain but striking black end papers, which actually I always think make it look very elegant. And uh, then we'll go through. So here is the name. And we've got a little tiny picture here. Whoops. We'll... Um, We'll colour this one, I think. I think we'll just do the little one, um, maybe. We'll see what else is here. But uh, there is the um, first page. Oh, we have a nice This Book Belongs To um, page with, um, I don't think, I'm, I was thinking I could come in a little bit closer. So you can see a little bit better, but I don't want to come in too close because I expect some of them might be double pages. So this was published in 2021. So still... Um, a really quite recent um, book. So we have a lovely crown and beads with the sort of twigs. Very pretty. And uh, here we go. So we have some little um, fairy critters and mushrooms. Now I know I'm not keen on doing people or I'm learning. I am learning. But little ones like this don't frighten me actually. It's the larger faces like this. But actually look at this one. We've got florals and things, this makes it a lot easier. And I'm getting more confident and I'm really wanting to have a go. So uh, I must do one soon. Um, but uh, all this is so pretty. And I like doing hair, it's just the face. So uh, I need to practice, I'm gonna get practicing. And look at these, I always think these these um, insects that she draws, they look like pretty brooches. And you can imagine having a brooch that looked like that with all diamonds and gold and silver and things. It's so pretty. And what do we have here? We have a house. 
I'm just trying to work out, I thought it might be two, but I think it's just a two-story house with the mushrooms. Very pretty, we've got the sun and all sorts of flowers. That's so pretty. I mean, it's interesting having this slightly smaller format. It means that there's not quite so much to colour on a page. You can get a page done more quickly, which I know for some people is better. Um, I like finishing pages. Now, of course, with the hardback, it's quite difficult, though, to get into here. Look, it doesn't sit too flat, but I think um, it's a sewn book. I can see the stitching in here, so we can probably... Um, work the spine a little bit but you have to be careful but um, that's okay I just like the hardback format it just feels so special so that's nice and here we have another lovely lady she's only got quite a small face so I don't find her too um, daunting she's got the sort of leaves around I'd be really tempted to do greens for her dress as well as the leaves sort of tie her all in as if she's part of the forest and look at this, it's such a cute little mouse, look, having a little snoozle, feet up on the mushroom, lovely big one here. And we have got this gap here. Now for some people that might be a little bit daunting, but you could just do a little pastel sky or something in there, or just leave it white. You don't have to fill in every bit of space. Or you could um, trace um, one of these, um, this little um, butterfly might just fit in there, I'm not sure. But um, that's fun. Oh wow! I'm just looking at that. I got distracted, but I shall go. <laughs> I shall look at this page. She looks very important. She's got a big crown, a uh, sort of orb. Or would that be a scepter? That'd be a, that orb and scepter. Maybe that way around. I think she's the queen. What do you reckon? And this one. This looks beautiful. Look at the beautiful stars. This, I can think of doing all sorts of gold work in there. You could use your sparkly pen, your glitter. Wow, very, very pretty. And look at this. This is just like out of a sort of um, fairy tale book, isn't it? Look, because we've got the toadstool. Beautiful house, house number even. Look at the detail, washing line, toad. But look, <laughs> he's up there, the frog prince maybe. He looks fab. And then we've got another quaint, cute little house. This one's a proper house, though, rather than being a part of a toadstool. We've got lovely floors, berries. Oh, really pretty. Oh, cold. I have a shiver. It's cold in here. I'll get a cardigan in a minute. And now we have a sort of fairy. I guess she is. Look at her wings. And uh, she's in some ferns. And there's another cute little butterfly there as well. It's really lovely. And look, fairy dust. How lovely. So you could keep this really straightforward, just colour what's there, or you could do a bit of a background. Um, I've seen some amazing watercolour backgrounds in Hannah's books. I'm just trying to feel the paper to see if it's the same as the other books. I think it is. It's nice and thick. Um, so I've seen a lot of people do a watercolour background. I'm not daring enough to do that yet. I've got my watercolour pencils. It's probably easier with paint. Um, to do a background but um, you know a pastels I'm happy with ah, and now we have two very pretty looking people um, so she's got all these lovely magical looking hair grips and a cute little bird and she's also got hers are more leafy look at those it's really pretty and another bird there see I like those I could do those I'm not scared by those. I think because I want to do all this, I, I'd be happy. So that's good. Right, what have we got here? Oh, I think I've seen this one coloured before. Probably have. Um, oh, that's my doorbell. Hold on a minute. Right, my husband went to get the door. So uh, I've come back having uh, been disturbed by the bell ringing. And uh, yes, we have this very pretty picture. Look at this very cute little bird. Well, big. <laughs> Quite a big bird. Or a rather little girl. I'm not sure. A really lovely... Oh, no. Right, sorry about that interruption. Um, I am back. I was so excited about doing this and I've been interrupted. It's most annoying. <laughs> so, we have our cute girl and lovely bird. Look at her bag. It's beautiful, isn't it? I can imagine trying to make it look all velvety. Lovely. And then look at this cottage. 
it just looks adorable. Got lovely little bugs on there and beautiful flowers. It's really, really pretty. Now, ooh, now this, she is the queen maybe? We've got all these lovely cute little animals. So we've got our hare, birds, and sort of beetles, and look at these little mice, and a dog, or fox, wolf, not sure, wolf, dog, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> now, now we've got some lovely birds in this one. Lots of magic, I think, with the stars. Really pretty. And now we've got a very autumnal looking picture I love. We've got lovely berries, acorns. I'm actually just colouring a Hannah Carlson acorn picture from Seasons, I think. So uh, that's been fun. I love the fact that we have so many of these little bugs. I know some people don't like colouring them, but I do. You can make them look, I mean, I know this bug's got jewels, but you can make them look really jewelled and pretty. That's really good fun. Oh, these leaves are just like the ones that I'm colouring. Um, or about to, I haven't started yet, but look, they're hanging with all these beautiful um, gemstones and things. That's really pretty. And we have a, mm, I'm trying to think of the name. It's like a, a man that's sort of a, a fawn, isn't it? Very pretty picture. I can't think of the name, it's bothering me, never mind. Okay, so we have two characters here and they are on top of these toadstools. I'm trying to work out, that it, it looks a bit like peacock feathers on their tops. Really pretty. Hmm. And then we have more toadstooly mushrooms here. Very nice. Now she's got two cute little friends in her hand. Look how sweet they are. Really pretty. And lovely crowns. I do like colouring crowns. It's such fun. Oh. Now she has got beautiful berries. I would almost be tempted to do that a bit Christmassy, like poinsettias and holly berries maybe. I don't know. Might not be supposed to be. But yeah. And we have a sort of a fox type character here. Like a Robin Hood almost. Love the shoes. So lovely. Look like really pretty soft leather. Now what's going on? Oh, do we have to have a snake with a crown? <laughs> I might be able to cope with that one actually. It's not as scary as some, I have to say. But I'm going to turn over. Now, here are our little children look, riding on bears. What a cute picture. Really cute. The hats are just adorable. I love them. And she has got acorns in her hair. It's very autumnal. Look at the pine cones, all almost wintry. Really nice. Oh, we have more magic going on in this one with a fairy look. Lovely. Ooh, this is quite, I rather like this picture. It's almost sort of Halloween-y. We have a sort of, I don't know what this critter is, but sort of cute and slightly scary at the same time. But I rather like, I think more cute. That's rather nice. We have two little bunnies. Oh, hairs? Rabbit's hairs? Not sure. Crowns. Nice. I've seen someone was colouring this on a video I saw the other day. It's a really pretty one. It's uh, I like it. It's almost like she's got a, a a snail shell rucksack on her back, which I think is really interesting. And here we have a, bo a bottles. Now glass is always a challenge to colour. I do enjoy um, doing it, so um, I can see this would be fun. And I think these little items inside are so cute. She is so pretty, isn't she? Really pretty. I like that. Lots of potential for gems. Again, really nice. Now, if you find gemstones really daunting, you don't have to colour them with pencil. You can just really get some pens like this and colour them in. You don't have to um, worry about making them look, look shiny with coloured pencils. It is fun, I think, but if it's daunting, don't worry about it. Oh, we have some blackberries in this picture. He's playing an old tune. I like that. That's such fun. She's having a sit on the mushroom and watching. This is really pretty. Really pretty. 
I know I'm quite thoughtful. Not um, Someone came to the door and I uh, was talking and I'm still thinking a bit about that, but also pondering how to colour these beautiful pages. Lovely toad, I would say, although frogs and toads, how you tell the difference is quite tricky. So I learnt, but uh, I think that one is lovely. I can see um, lovely um, olivey greens and uh, really, really fun. Now, look at all the jewels she has got, all these beads, lovely headdress, very pretty. Oh, I've seen Emily Illustrator has coloured this picture, I think, on a, one of her live streams. I've certainly seen her um, do these unicorns. Um, it's a rather magical double page, lovely water lilies and things. Um, really nice, really lovely. Now, ooh, this is another very magical looking page. We have a, he very much looks like a magician, doesn't he? With his um, hat and cloak and uh, whatever that is. <laughs> and this little friend with him. Yeah, I've seen this one coloured. He can look quite scary, but quite cute. And I think I would want to go down the cute line. But doing fur, there's a lot of furry critters. I um, I don't think I've done many fur tutorials. I haven't done a lot of fur colouring really, but uh, I do it quite, I do it in a quite an easy way. So I shall show you. So uh, this one we've got stars and look, they're going into the water somehow, which is fun. It's got, looks quite magical. Must be night time, look, got the candle. And I guess we've gone under the water here to see these two. They're fun. Now, Another, um, look, she has got birds in here. Very pretty, lovely birds. And here is another um, one with this um, sort of critter. Look, he's sheltering them from the rain. It's very sweet. They're standing in a puddle. So uh, it's that cute. Oh, I think we have another double. Let's try and hold it open for you. So we have a set of lights going through, but we have these two lovely houses and some really cute birds. They're so cute. She makes her birds look really, really fluffy and feathery. I like it. Now, this, um, she's got a lot of magic in her hands. We have two lovely um, dogs, wolves, not sure. And now we have some more insects here. Really pretty. Um, intricate actually page I think with some sharp pencils now we've got a fire colouring fire is always a fun thing to do I find quite challenging but I enjoy it so that's good and we've got all our little critters around keeping warm oh and here we have hmm, a sort of deer type animal I'm guessing with these sort of like leafy antlers really fun very elegant. These are nice. Again, they look like they could be very magical, which I like. It's good fun. And this chappy, he looks very, very elegant. And uh, we've got these candles, three candles actually. Very, look at his bow. Very smart. I like that one. Now these two are off to catch stars. Look, they've got stars in their um, nets and in the hand. There's lots in the sky still for them to catch. It's an interesting design because look, we've got the trees here and here but there's nothing in the middle here so you have to have a think about what to put there and how to colour that. Hmm, interesting. So here we have a tree design, lots of light, candle light in the trees, and little insects and things, that's rather fun. Oops. Oh, and this is our last one, and that the candle looks like it might just be going out. There's a wisp of smoke, and it's rather pretty. So that's the flip through, and as I said, I'm going to do a picture from the front um, for you. I'm just going to do this little one here. I thought it would be fun. I've got some paper here to pop behind the page. Go. And what pencils do I have? I know. We'll come in a little. Hang on, I'll show you the pencils first before I get into the close. I happen to have these next to me, the Stedler Super Soft um, Design Journey set. 
So, oops, so I'm going to use those, but it's coming a bit closer. Get, get the um, picture in the middle. There we go. Right. Hmm. I have already decided that I will do all of the um, mushroom slash toadstools in the same colour. I think that looks um, more striking. And I'm actually going to start with the red. This is number two, which is the red. It's just called red. And what I like to do with these is I like to do them a little darker on each edge. And then a little lighter towards the middle, like that. And then I'm going to go over that again, like that. I can do the same on all of them. I'm going to try and go quite quickly so it's not too boring. But um, I'm going to add in another colour in a minute. So at the moment I'm just trying to concentrate on the red, but uh, we'll get some more colour in there. And there's so many lovely pictures in here that I'd like to start on, but um, I thought it would just be easier to do a small one. Now I, as far as I can tell, this paper seems very much the same as in her other books, but I couldn't say for absolutely for sure because I haven't got them side by side and oh, I have used these pencils in one of her other books hmm. and I think it feels the same so I, I'm not very good at telling really but uh, it's certainly going down and leaving me with a vibrant colour which is rather nice now I'm going to use my second colour which is actually an orange it's number four which is the just called orange and uh, I want to do that nearer to the middle so we've got a sort of lighter bit I am going to go back in with the red in a minute and go over those red bits the idea of this is just to get some orange showing through And uh, hopefully we can see it a little bit. And then I'm going to go back to the same red, number two again. I've just darken the edges a bit more. Now these pencils do layer up quite nicely. Which is good fun. That one doesn't seem like I put the orange on. Maybe I did a bit light. I'm taking it right into the middle a little. Well, not too much. I'm going to put some orange in this one. It just didn't seem like it had any. There we go. Now what I like to do is underneath each of the circles, I often will put a little bit of shadow. I'm going to use my brown, which here is number 76, which is called, hmm, do I have it written down? Yes, Van Dyke brown. So I'm just going to put a little bit under here to act as a bit of a shadow. all the way through and then I also want a darkish colour under here now I only have a light grey in this set so I'm actually going to use a bit of this brown to uh, just darken up a few this area 
I completely missed that one. <laughs> How many of you noticed and were shouting? How long is she going to take to notice? Is she ever going to notice? Or she just thinks she's finished and not have done it? <laughs> and then the orange. Okay, now I'm going to grab my grey. It's the light grey number 80. And I'm going to go over the top of the brown a little bit and then do my stems. Now ideally I would do them a little bit um, darker along the edge than the middle but they're quite small. So I'm just going to keep it really simple. And uh, just keep it all the same colour. I mean I could get my black and do a little bit of dark on the edge but actually I'm struggling to see it, this design very well. I think the light in here is a bit strange, it's getting a bit dark. So I'm going to just leave it like that. Now we have these rocks. Now I can do them in a brownish colour or I could do them in a greyish colour. I'm thinking because I've got my grey um, stems, if I do them in grey it's all going to meld together. Now that might be okay but I think I'm going to do them brown. And I'm actually going to start with a lighter brown. This is actually the Burnt Sienna, number 73. Um, I'm just going to do the whole of the rock in the Burnt Sienna. And uh, then we can go over with the darker brown just to add a bit of um, shadow. So back to our number 76. Rather than using black, I think it's better to try and use the brown. So I start low, just put a bit of shadow coming up the um, rock. Like this. And uh, do it the same on all of them. Sorry, I am still pondering. My, the person who came to the door, my neighbour, has a business proposition for us. And it's a big step. I probably, we probably won't do it to be honest, but I'm just sort of thinking it through a little bit. I'm going to use number nine, which is the black, just to do a few shadows. So I'm thinking behind that rock there. Behind that rock there. This one and this one. Just a little bit, just to make them stand out from each other a little bit. Now, in the sky here we have all sorts of magic going on, which is great fun. Um, I'm going to colour the stars first. I think this is the golden... This is... Um, uh, this is the peach, hang on. That's not the colour I want. I think I want the... Um, golden ochre which is number 16 to do the stars to start with and then some yellow for those little round ones I think might be fun so I'm going to grab this one which is just called yellow it's number one I'm going to do the bits in the circles hopefully it will stand out enough it's quite lemony this yellow, although we do have a a light yellow, which is even paler. But hopefully that will stand out enough. And then I want to do some colour behind that a little bit, just to create a little bit of an atmosphere. Now I'm thinking I could go pink, I could go blue. I think I might go blue sky-like, rather than trying to go pink. And I'm going to use the, um, yeah, the light blue number 30. Now I want this quite light so I'm going to hold it quite low down the pencil on its side and just very gently put a light layer around the picture. Like 
like this and uh, just just add in that a little bit of sky I mean, you might feel that you would want to do it in um, um, sort of black to make it more night timey because of the stars but rather than I thought that rather than being stars as in dark night stars I sort of think of them as magic so I don't think it needs to be night time I'm just trying to taper it off at the edges it's quite the hardest thing I have found to try and do is to just sort of fade it off it's much easier to do this with a pastel than it is with a pencil and uh, I'm just doing the best I can so I'm just going all the way around and I want to just do make it because this is the first page that you see I want to just make it look a little bit more special I'm just fiddling and faddling with the background um, I'm gonna get some gold stickles and put on now stickles are like glitter glue and sometimes when you use them you can accidentally put a big blob down and when you try and use the back you've got this big blob to colour on however this is a single sided page on the back is just the copyright information so I'm not so worried these are called got just simply called gold oh, it's hard for you to see it doesn't want to show up and I'm actually going to use them on all the little dots you just squeeze in gently and a little bit of the glitter glue comes out I've shown you these before but just in case you're new what I'm going to do is on that star I was going to try and go around the edge but I can't it's too small so I'm just going to try and put some inside and you can sort of spread it with the end so get just a little bit and try and spread it around a bit and uh, it makes it quite fun and pretty like that now you can't see so I'm just gonna tip it up to the light so you can see it shining and I find that it's really shiny it's the sort of shiniest thing I found and I'm also going to use these stickles these are a diamond they're called I'm going to use them on the dots on the you know the spots and again exactly the same just squeeze it you might hear the tube it just makes a little squirty noise as you um, push it squeeze it and I found this one's a bit squirty and sometimes the glue doesn't go where I want it I think if you wanted to be really precise and fussy you might want a little bit of tissue nearby just to mop it up if it doesn't quite go where you want it but to be honest I'm not that fussed I, uh, I'm just happy with making it look shiny and if that shiny bit goes too far out the lines that's okay you know me I'm quite chilled about these things so uh, it's fine just I take my time with this I colour fast because I know if I make a mistake with a pencil I can just rub it out but with this it's a bit more precise Uh, it's fun I mean you could do it on the stem as well but I think it might be too much or even on the name of the book but uh, it's done oh sorry I put you not even in shop but I'll just tip it up so you can see the shine because the diamond one there we go has some really pretty colours in it so uh, it's uh, it's really nice um, it's sort of almost pearlescent it's got sort of yellow and green and blue and red I think so uh, that's really lovely so there we go there is that so thank you for watching um, I will be doing more um, from this book tutorials and things but if there is a particular page that you would like me to do then just drop um, put, pop it in the comments and I will uh, I will do that but uh, I can't wait to get started. I've got so many other lovely pictures to do as well. I'm in the middle of one at the minute that I've got to finish before I do any from here. <laughs> but um, that's me. So thank you for watching. Have a really lovely day and happy colouring. <laughs>